Do you also blend by perfumes? Since I live in a small place, it's not easy to find more exclusive or niche perfumes, so the only way to try them out sometimes is to blind buy them. And I've decided to make a new video series that will follow some of my blind buys. And for each perfume, I will tell you, is it a blind buy success or a blind buy fail? And in the end, I'll tell you my favorites. Hello everyone, I'm Miri and here we talk in depth about fragrances and less start with the first one and that is Matière Première and Sensuelle. This is a very hyped up and praised perfume, some even compared to Yves Saint Laurent Baby Cat, but to me they're not really that similar. Just like all the other fragrances in the Mathieu Premier line, this one is also centered around one main note, while all the other notes have a supporting role. They add different facets to the main incense note. And the name says, what will this smell like? And Sensuave means sweet incense and this is the sound you get. It's sweet, spicy, ambery, a bit woody and above all very very smoky. Ensign Suave opens with the smoothest possible smoky incense that is enveloped in a spicy warm amberiness and although coffee is listed as the top note yeah, I can't smell it, neither on paper, neither on my skin. And I was really looking forward to smelling that coffee incense combo and seeing how it would work out, but I don't get it. The top notes have like a sacred, churchy, smoky, metallic feel, like you're visiting a cathedral while traveling in some European destination. You're sitting in the wooden pews, the atmosphere is a bit dark, candles are melting and illuminating ornate walls, and then the priest walks by you swinging the thurible of incense. So this scent feels sacred, smoky, but meditative and embery warm as well. And incense suave doesn't change much because the smoky incense is the main note throughout the wear, but the more it dries down, it becomes sweeter and more rounded because of the vanilla and it becomes less churchy. The incense never smells dusty, ashy, pungent, earthy or unpleasant, you always get a sweet and ambery warm smokiness. I like it much more in the dry down when you start getting more of that incense vanilla, but the vanilla here isn't overly prominent. Although it adds to the overall sweetness and it softens the churchy vibe you got in the opening. So this becomes a combination of the scent of incense papers and burnt sugar. When you combine them, yeah, so you got Anson Suave. This is a colder weather fragrance and not something I would recommend wearing to work. Also, it's definitely not a safe blind buy because you must like smoky perfumes. And if you like more complex fragrances, this one might be a bit too linear for you because basically what you get is the scent of sweet candies inside a smoky room. I do enjoy the scent but to me it's more masculine and I don't see myself wearing it. But on a man this would be, yeah, it would be very amazing and very sexy. And for a fragrance centered around incense, it smells gorgeous and I do like it more as it dries down and becomes a bit more tamed due to vanilla. And since so I've lasts about eight hours on my skin and it has moderate projection, so overall I would rate it with eight out of 10. It's beautiful, but on a man, not on me. So this was a blind by fail because I can't wear it. It's a polarizing scent, but I do recommend it if you're a man and if you're a woman and you love incense and you want something artistic, then check out Mathia Premier and Saint Suave. The next perfume is Je sais pas Femme's Accident à la Vanille and I blind bought it because of the hype it's getting on social media and I thought, you know, there's nothing not to like about this fragrance. Also, it was released in 2021 and since then it already has several flankers. For example, there is Crème de la Berry, Madeleine de Proust and Almond Cake Limited Edition and it is very rare for a niche perfume to have flankers so I thought, you know, 
that says a lot about the popularity and likability of this fragrance so I'm pretty sure I will like it and I like the name. On the Juste Parfums website it's translated as Vanilla Crash so I thought you know the name is cool as well but how does this fragrance smell? Accidental Vanille is a very linear fragrance in which you get a rich thick vanilla that isn't silky, powdery or straight up vanilla extract. Rather it smells something like thick vanilla cake freshly baked from the oven with some bourbon quality. And I must admit that at the initial spray you got something a bit synthetic, medicinal, cold but very quickly like I can't smell it anymore. After a minute it settles into a dense deep very sweet and overall very dessert like buttery vanilla. The opening is a bit more challenging to my nose while the dry down is just simply deliciously sweet and gourmand. In the notes, hazelnuts aren't listed, but I get a roasted nutty aroma as well, probably because of the combination of sandalwood and styrix. To some that roasted nuttiness you get smells like buttery popcorn or graham crackers, and I can see why, because you get hints of salty melted butter as well, but I wouldn't say this has a popcorn vibe. Basically, this is a delicious, creamy, thick, curvaceous buttery vanilla, similar to a scent of butterscotch pound cake or butter vanilla bean blondies with melted toffee in which someone by accident put roasted hazelnuts. Accidental Avani lasts about four to five hours on my skin and the scent doesn't lift off very much of the skin. It has decent projection and silage for the first hour but then it becomes a very intimate scent so it's never in your face bold daring vanilla fragrance. I expected it to last longer and project a bit more but the scent is beautiful and very sultry although a bit too cakeish too buttery for my taste. This is a dessert type of vanilla for gourmand lovers. The scent is very feminine and I can't see how a guy can pull it off because Accident à la is a very culinary, buttery and nutty sweet perfume with some caramel facets. Yes, it's very yummy, it's very delicious, but to me it's a bit too foody and it lacks the longevity. So my rating for Accidental La Vanille is 6.5 out of 10. This was a blind buy fail because I will resell my bottle and I'm really upset about the performance and because I don't see myself smelling like this. I see myself eating something like this, but not smelling like this. I wouldn't recommend blind buying it, but vanilla addicts and heavy gourmand lovers will go crazy about it and with a reason. This smells like the most delicious buttery dessert and if you want to smell like this then yeah go and check it out. The next fragrance is Banana Republic Tobacco and Tonka Bay. And while I was scrolling on the Natino website I saw this fragrance and I never heard any frack tubers I follow mention it before, so I did a little research and many people had a lot of positive comments about it and I thought, you know, why not, let's try it out. The scent was released in 2019 and I can't believe that for the last five years I didn't know about its existence. It's absolutely gorgeous and it comes in a very luxe packaging considering it's a cheapie, so it would make a great gift. When you first spray it, I can't get any pear, but I can smell a lot of plum with tobacco and you get some boozy, juicy, dark plum that quickly fades, unfortunately, after about two minutes. Then you start smelling the creamiest tonka with almond facets together with a whisper of smoky, spicy tobacco and some fruitiness in the background. I guess creaminess comes from the coconut and I do appreciate that coconut here doesn't become tropical, it's not sunscreen like, rather it gives a creamy sweetness that envelops tonka and tobacco-ish fruity nuances into a really, really delicious scent that smells 
a lot more expensive than it really is. Tobacco and tonka bean smells like the richest tonka bean and plum whipped cream. After about half an hour, fruitiness completely disappears and the coconut creaminess is replaced with vanilla sweetness. You get a sweet, slightly smoky tonka with a powdery vanilla. So the simplest way to describe the dry down is to say this smells like tonka bean panna cotta with a smoky tobacco background. I absolutely love every stage of this fragrance. It's so beautiful but don't expect this to have a lot of tobacco because tobacco in every stage has just a supporting role and mostly this is a very sweet tonka and vanilla combination with some light smokiness and fruitiness so if you're looking for a tobacco dominant perfume this won't be it. The name is misleading and it should be named vanilla and tonka bean. The scent is very versatile and it's appropriate for any occasion but it's better fitting for fall and winter. It's unisex and I think it will be equally amazing on a woman and a man but it leans slightly more feminine in my opinion. I get about six hours of the wear and for the first two hours it has moderate projection and silage but after the second hour mark it becomes softer and weaker so only those around you will be able to smell it. Therefore the only down point of this fragrance is the projection. If it projected more it would be like the most perfect fragrance but overall it's a moderate lasting and projecting perfume especially for the price this is very acceptable. I know many of you commented that you can buy a bottle at Burlington for around $20 but there's no Burlington in Croatia so the only way to find this fragrance was on the Nutino website and I paid 40 euros for the bottle so it wasn't that cheap but I think this fragrance is worth it. It's a great value for your money, it looks and smells more expensive and overall this fragrance is a winner for me so my rating for its and profile and performance is 8.5 out of 10. Yes, it's nothing revolutionary or on a niche level, but it's intoxicating, it's addictive, it's a sleeper hit from Banana Republic and I absolutely recommend it for its scent, price and presentation and this is a safe blind buy. I can't imagine, like I can't imagine anyone smelling this and hating it because it's so well done and for the price like there's nothing you can complain about. Tobacco and tonka bean is easy to wear, it was a blind buy success and it's one of the best smelling cheapest I purchased and I would call it a hidden gem. The next fragrance is Vanilla del Madagascar by I Profumi di Firenze. I blind bought second hand because I found a pretty good deal. I bought it for 50 euros while the 50 ml bottle is sold for around 120 dollars. Therefore, I like the price, I like the vintage look of the bottle, it's so simple and beautiful. Also I know that Madagascar vanilla is rich and expensive so I thought I would like this perfume and I was right. At the initial spray you get a light pure vanilla with some floral green touches. On Fragrantica it's listed it has Lily of the Valley while on the E Profumi di Firenze website Honeysuckle is listed as the floral accord together with some green notes. Vanilla is the dominant note throughout the fragrance wear and initially Vanilla del Madagascar smells so natural, pure and authentic like you're smelling a pile of fresh vanilla pods split open while while you get a whisper of honeysuckle and green grass freshness from the distance. It's a true vanilla but in a non-edible way because florals bring out more feminine and gentle feel and prevent the scent from being completely edible. After about five minutes whipped cream becomes more prominent and this turns into a vanilla whipped cream combo that is very sweet, deep, it has caramel-like facets and a 
addictive creaminess. Vanilla del Madagascar is the creamiest vanilla you can imagine that becomes sweeter and more edible as it dries down. It almost smells like a vanilla custard on my skin, so it gives you a warm, soothing and comforting feel similar to a hug or a warm feel when you wear a cashmere sweater. The scent is creamy, it's lightly powdery, musky and very sweet. The best way to describe it is to say it smells exactly like vanilla ice cream or like Oreo cream filling. There's nothing boozy, play doh sugary or candy shop-like in this fragrance. This is basically a one-dimensional fragrance, straight up vanilla with floral facets in the opening and whipped creaminess in the dry down and with some custard-like vibe. It's a rather simple fragrance that was very unique in the early 2000s when it came out and when the vanilla trend started in perfume but now there are a lot of other pure vanilla fragrances on the market. If I smelled this at the beginning of my fragrance journey or before I bought a Kayalis Vanilla 28, which is like a culinary very sweet vanilla, I would love this. You know, both Kayali and I Profumi di Firenze vanillas are amazing on their own, but also great for layering. And Vanilla del Madagascar has slightly better performance than Kayali's Vanilla 28 on my skin. I get about seven hours of the wear, while on clothes it lasts a lot longer. Initially, this fills the entire room and it has gorgeous silage and projection and then it becomes moderate projecting perfume. So I have no issues with the performance of Vanilla del Madagascar. I'm surprised that nobody talks about this fragrance. Like, why? Because it's beautiful and the only issue I can think of is its simplicity. When you start smelling a lot of perfumes, especially niche perfumes, your taste expands and this is pretty but a bit too simple pure vanilla now or the scent of Oreo cream so my rating for its scent profile and performance is 7.5 out of 10. This is a high quality fragrance, it's effortlessly pretty and it's great for layering, it is underrated, it deserves more recognition and it was a blind buy success but it lacks just some tiny touch to make it into a completely dazzling standout vanilla I would absolutely love. I would recommend this if you're a vanilla lover and if you're looking for a custard style vanilla or another vanilla layering perfume that isn't Kayali's Vanilla 28. After its release in 2023, Caramel Pop by Viva More Perfumes was praised as one of the best gourmand perfumes you can try as a perfume to die for and as an affordable but high quality niche perfume. When I found a good deal, I bought it to see is the hype real? Literally, what the name suggests is what you get here. Caramel Pop starts with a very realistic popcorn note with caramel and some tiny fresh citrusy hints from bergamot. To me, bergamot is a good addition to lift some of the happiness this perfume has and I wish it was more prominent and longer lasting because after two minutes of the wear, sadly, I can't smell bergamot anymore. So initially, caramel pop starts with an explosion of caramel poured over salty, buttery popcorn. As it dries down, it becomes even sweeter and more caramel pronounced perfume, but it's sweet and salty at the same time. During the entire wear, it features caramel popcorn with a strong buttery heaviness and thickness, but as it develops, you start noticing some other supporting notes, such as roasted chestnut with some booziness and floral orchid touches in the heart and woody nuances in the base. Imagine you invited your friends for a movie night at your home. You picked the movie and prepared caramel popcorn with roasted nuts for snacks. You put those snacks on the wooden table next to a beautiful orchid and some liqueur so the movie can begin. 
This is the vibe this perfume gives me. It encapsulates a cozy atmosphere at home when you're enjoying snacks and doing something fun and relaxing with your friends and family. And in the deepest dry down, this becomes a very creamy caramel vanilla scent. This is the most realistic gourmand perfume with caramel popcorn you can imagine. And I think this perfume could use some additional freshness that will cut through all those heavy gourmand notes so I'm really sad the bergamot wasn't really more prominent in caramel pop. The scent is very dense, it's thick, it's sweet, it's buttery, it's salty and an extremely realistic fruity fragrance. It literally smells like freshly made hot buttery popcorn covered with dense sweet caramel. So to me it's too foodie like, too sweet, too realistic and too cloying. But I must admit, it has amazing performance. It's a projecting beast. It fills a room for the first hour and then it becomes moderate projecting perfume. It lasts about eight hours on my skin, so no performance issues here. But precisely because it's so foodie-like, I wouldn't recommend wearing this to office and especially not in the spring and summer. Caramel Pop is a unisex perfume and both genders can pull it off but it's more feminine because of the caramel and those some light floral facets. I do agree this is a very high quality niche perfume you can get for a cheap price considering how other niche perfumes are priced. You can buy a 100 ml bottle for $125 so I have no complaints there either. But this isn't a safe blind buy at all. You must love a realistic gourmand perfume, perfumes that literally smell like food to enjoy it. Also, you must like popcorns and salty notes and fragrances. And to be completely honest, I don't like it. No, I don't like it at all. I can't deny it smells edible. It makes you drool. Like literally, it makes you drool. I want to eat caramel popcorns, but I don't want to smell like that. I don't want to smell like food. Therefore, yeah, this was a blind buy fail and my rating for the scent would be like four out of 10 for the performance it would be 9 out of 10 so overall Viva Mo Parfums Caramel Pop gets 6.5 out of 10 but to its defense many other niche perfumes I've tried didn't even remotely have such a great performance and massive projection so considering uniqueness price and if you're a realistic foodie gourmand lover this will be a masterpiece for you but to me it's a pass. I wish it was a bit lighter and that it smelled more perfumey. If you're still here and you enjoyed this video and these short but in-depth reviews of these fragrances then boop the like button, hit the notification bell and subscribe and let me know in the comments do you like this type of video and should I make another blind buy success or fail type of video in the future. But until then just a few final thoughts about these fragrances. Three perfumes that are by no means a safe blind buy are first Mathieu Premier and Sensuave because it features incense and not many love that type of fragrance even though this one is done so skillfully and the next one is Jusa Parfums Accident à la Vanille because it's very sweet, it's thick culinary fragrance that doesn't have the best performance and the third perfume that isn't a safe blind buy is Vivamo Parfums caramel pop because it's a realistic foodie gourmand perfume that will be too much for most people unless you absolutely love gourmands that smell like literal food. And the two perfumes that would be relatively safe blind by are I Profumi di Firenze Vanilla del Madagascar because this is a pure sweet vanilla, literally a scent of vanilla pods or Oreo cream that never smells too edible and therefore a lot of people will like this but maybe find it a bit boring and lacking some unique touch in the current fragrance market. And the second safe blind buy is 
especially for the price, Banana Republic Tobacco and Tonka Bean. To me, this is completely underrated. It's a hidden gem not many people talk about, and there's not a lot of tobacco here. Mostly you get vanilla and tonka bean, so it will be mass appealing, and it smells a lot more expensive than it really is. If I had to rank them, then the fourth place would go to Viva Mo Parfums Caramel Pop and Giuseppe Parfums Accident à la Vanille. They both got 6.5 out of 10 because they are too gourmand and too foodie-like for my taste. Third place with 7.5 out of 10 goes to I Profumi di Firenze Vanilla del Madagascar because this is a simple, pretty vanilla, great for layering. I absolutely recommend you to check it out. If you have the chance, it's a great authentic vanilla scent. And the second place with 8 out of 10 goes to Mathia Pamier and Saint Suave. And I think this is one of the best and most beautifully blended incense perfumes. I would absolutely love to smell on a man, but not on myself. And that is the only reason why it won't stay in my collection. While the first place with 8.5 out of 10 goes to the cheapest perfume out of them all but the perfume that completely blew me away and that is Banana Republic Tobacco and Tonka Bean. If you had the chance to try out these perfumes, share your thoughts and opinions in the comments. I would love to read them and just be aware that just because some of these perfumes were a blind buy fail for me, that doesn't mean you won't love them. But I want to be completely honest and share my perfume journey with you guys and also be a part of your fragrance journey. If you want to hear my completely honest opinion and in-depth review of another very praised, expensive, luxury niche perfume, Alexander J. Oriental Enigma, then check out this video. I will see you there. Bye!